Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you to the Brockton Branch NAACP's Candidates Forum. At this time, I would like to ask that members that are running for re-election or election to the Brockton School Committee, please join us on this stage. Members that are running for Brockton School Committee. Bring your signs. Make sure you bring your signs, as directed by my president. Bring your sign. I'm a little confused. Members of the school committee are those that are running for election to that office. Please come to the stadium, to, to the podium. I only have three registered. I mean, they're signed in. So, so folks, this is serious business when it comes to the education of our children. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm understanding from my president that there's only three individuals here today. Is that true? That's true. A few, a few um, emailed me and said they couldn't be here, but the others did not, so they are just not showing up. The president indicates that there are some that have what we call excused absences, and there are some that did not follow up. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the NAACP is a nonpartisan civil rights organization. We believe that all voices matter. We welcome diverse views. We seek an understanding through dialogue to make the American experience live up to the creed of this nation. The Brockton Branch NAACP is a leader in ensuring equal access and housing, economic development, education, justice, legal support, and media diversity. Through our civic engagement and civil rights advocacy, we are fighting for the residents of the city of Brockton. Today, under the leadership of the award-winning Phyllis Ellis, we, en <laughs> we engage in the political process by engaging you, the community, to meet the candidates for various political offices. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Myra Kraft MVP awardee, President Phyllis Ellis. Give her a hand clap. Thank you, everyone. I'm happy that everyone is here. I want to first thank the um, Brockton School System and uh, Michael Thomas for supplying us the food and the beverages in the other room. I hope you guys partook in that. I'll be Great. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Uh, the Brockton Area Branch NACP does not endorse any candidates. We are nonpartisan. So whatever you hear out there is not true. We cannot endorse anyone, but we can wish you well, and we do wish you well with your candidacy, okay? For full disclosure, I sent out emails or telephone calls to all the candidates letting them know that this was gonna to happen today. Some of them responded, said they would be here. Others did not. Uh, some emailed me and told me they couldn't be here because they're on vacation, which is fine. But the others that I did not hear from, they're just, not showing up, and that's not a good thing. But on with the show. Uh, in the email to the candidates, I said we were gonna start with the uh, school committee first. The school committee will have three minutes to come up, introduce themselves, tell us um, what you're running for, and why you're running, and why we should vote for you. They will have three minutes to do that. We will then go on to the ward counselors. The ward counselors will have three and a half minutes to do the same thing. The council at large, they will have four minutes to tell us what they're gonna do and what they're not gonna do. And finally, we're gonna have the mayor candidates and they will have five minutes, okay? So we're gonna get started with the uh, school committee. So I have three who um, responded. Tony Rodriguez emailed me, said he could not be here. Joyce Asak is working. Um, and I think that's it. So the others are just no-shows. So we're gonna start with Kathleen Elders. Kathleen, three minutes. Tony, are you keeping? Yes, I am. Phyllis, we're here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, you can use one of the microphones in front of you because of the CDC guidelines. Okay. Good afternoon. 
My name is Kathy Ehlers and I'm running for school committee in Ward 1. Today's an opportunity for all of you to understand why I'm running for school committee. I'm running because this is my city. I was born here at Brockton Hospital, raised here as a third, in, as a third year education professional and administrator. We are currently faced at a crossroads requiring skills, systematic knowledge, and a vision to lead our children into future success. When our children succeed, Brockton succeeds. I am uniquely qualified to serve our students based on experience and education. With an understanding in nonprofit traditional education at the post-secondary level, skills-based education training aligned with workforce development initiatives, and I was very happy to serve at the oldest immigrant and refugee resettlement organization in the United States, the International Institute of New England. I'm also accomplished in leading large, diverse populations and see this serving me well while driving our youngest Brockton citizens to the future economic growth for our city. Some residents have wondered why now, because I don't have any children in the school system. When my children were young, so was I. And my experience was young as well. I didn't have the time or the experience I do today. With my children grown, I now have the fortune dedicating my time, experience, energy, and education to Ward 1 in the city of Brockton. As a second generation Irish immigrant, I grew up with the stories about my grandparents struggling to make it to Ellis Island and faced with signs everywhere that said, Irish need not apply. My grandmother made $4 a week as a nanny, sent $2 of it home to help feed her additional 11 siblings. It took her six months to save for a winter coat to get through the New England winters. They made their way to Brockton. My grandfather worked at American Steel in Stoughton, and they very proudly purchased their first home ever. Owning land was a big deal in Ireland, much like many countries today. Like all of you, this has shaped who I am today, and I work hard not to take these things for granted, especially educational access and opportunity. I don't make any promises to any of you except to commit 100% of my skills, knowledge and energy in making Brockton Public Schools a better place for our children. We can all be better. We just have to try. I'm very grateful to be here, to be part of this community. The previous administration and school committee has done an amazing job with our current budget. We are in a better fiscal place today than we have been in many years by formally addressing the need and creation of a division of equity, diversity, inclusion, allotting $2.9 million in overdue facility improvements, adding $2 million to fund new student programs, and for the first time in 10 years, we have a substitute teacher line item that is properly funded. Thank you for your time and your consideration today and your vote. Thank you, Kathleen. Jared Homer also emailed me and said he could not attend. Next up, we will have Matthew Stanton. Matthew. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the Brockton area and WACP uh, for holding this and uh, big congratulations to Phyllis uh, that award the other day. Um, thank you. That was great. We should all give her a round of applause for that. She does so uh, much for the community. Thank you guys. Um, like I said, my name is Matthew Stanton. I'm a candidate for Ward 3 School Committee. Um, I never thought I'd be standing up here, let me tell you. Um, so I'm sorry if I seem a little nervous out of place. I got 612 index cards here. I got three minutes. Um, I've thought about this for a long time, um, you know, months and months. I, you haven't seen my name out there. I don't have any signs yet or anything. But what I've been doing is, is walking the neighborhoods, talking to people. Um, and in an atmosphere that is so divisive uh, in politics, everywhere you go, um, I feel that children bring us together. There's not a person in here I, I, I can't imagine that doesn't want what's best for Brockton students. Uh, my wife and I have not been blessed with children as of yet. Uh, we have a 12-year-old nephew who we are in charge of 100% of his education. Um, and I picked him up on that day in March, the last day of school in 2020, when, when schools were closed. And we didn't know what was gonna happen. Um, and kudos to Brockton School, everybody, everybody, the, the council, the committee, the mayor, uh, 
the administrators, everybody. They did a great job. The turnaround time was great. Every kid had a laptop, um, and they did their best. They really did. Um, but unfortunately, that fourth grader that I picked up that day, now in September, he's going to be in sixth grade. And I can't honestly stand here before you and tell you that he is sixth grade ready. And as I said, my wife and I have not been blessed with children, but we have, I don't know what the enrollment is, 17,000 or so. We have 17,000 kids. Each one of the students in Brockton schools are ours, um, and all of yours as well. All right, I'll end it there. I'm sorry. I, could, uh, I did want to mention the buses. The, I think the buses is a great, going to save us a lot of money. Kids field trips, everything like that. We're going to bring transportation in. Sorry, I didn't get to talk more in detail. I'll be walking, talking. I'm going to be the, do the podcast with Ruby <laughs> next week. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, vote Matthew Stanton, September thank 14th. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next up is Anna Oliver. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, thank you, Double NACP, for having me here today. My name is Anna Oliver, and I'm running for Ward 3 School Committee. I was raised in Brockton. I was born in Cape Verde. Um, I have three amazing kids in the Brockton school system. I've been a nurse for 10 years. Uh, 10 of those years have been at the bedside, and seven as a school nurse in the uh, charter school in Boston. I've decided to run. Um, I know what it's like to be a parent, but also an educator. My goal is to be a bridge between parents and the educators in this community, giving parents an open line communication to understand and advocate for themselves and their children's education rights. Growing up in a household with a mother that only spoke Creole Portuguese, I was her line of communication, and that was very difficult as a child. I want to be able to give direct communication to those parents and our communities without relying on their children so their children can be a child. We need to find a better resource of giving information to our communities, especially those that speak different language. My hope is to create a more inclusive environment where everyone is a part of the conversation when it comes to our kids' education. With my vote, I hope we can achieve great things to give every child here in Brockton a chance of a better education. And I hope to get your votes. Thank you, Anna. Um, thank you, guys. You may exit the stage. Just give them another hand of applause, please. Next up, we're going to have the ward councils. And because of the CD guidelines, I want ward councils one through three to come to the stage. Ward councils one, two, and three. You can bring your signs and you can space out, please on either side. We're going to start off with Mr. Green. Marlon, are you ready? Good afternoon, and thank you to the NAACP, Ms. Phyllis Ellis, as president. And thank you for your uh, sound leadership um, in the Brockton NAACP. Also appreciation to the other BCA for um, providing important coverage today. And most importantly to the other citizens and the residents of Brockton who have taken the time to be here to hear the thoughts and the ideas and the positions um, of those who are running to represent your voice. My name is Marlon Green and I am running uh, for um, City Council Ward 1. I've been a resident of Brockton for approximately uh, 20 years now. And my wife and I have um, two sons who are students in the Brockton public school system. Um, they are um, 12 and 14 years old. And they are our pride and joy. And everything that we do as parents, we do it for our kids to secure a better life, a better future for them. We build today so that there can be a better tomorrow for them, and not just for them, but for you and for your children as well. 
I'm a pastor and I've been a minister for over 18 years of my life. I work in healthcare and I've been in healthcare for over 20 years on the research side. And I have uh, committed my life um, through ministry and the professional work that I do to making life better and to create situations <laughs> that uplift the quality of life for people. On July 20th, I was uh, reminded why I should not run and why someone like me does not count. On that day, early that morning, my 14-year-old son walked down our driveway and he was greeted by several jugs of urine thrown and poured in our driveway. And written on those bottles were racial and political messages seeking to intimidate and to divide us. But this leader stands before you today running for Ward 1 with a resolve to stand for unity, to stand for integrity, and to bring our people, to bring our community together. I ask you to consider me as your choice for, for Boston, Brockton City Council. I used to live in Boston. Brockton City Council, Ward 1. Thank you so much for your time. George Brickhouse. My name is George Brickhouse, and I'm running for Ward 3 City Council. I want to thank uh, the NAACP, and I want to thank you, the community of Rockton, for taking the time to be here today. I'm running for Ward 3 City Council because I believe we have a window. We have a window of opportunity in Brockton right now to do something spectacular, to make Brockton into what you want it to be, to make Brockton into what you think it could be. We have an opportunity in Brockton between those who've grown up in Brockton and who've been here going to school in Brockton. Also, those who have moved into Brockton. Some have moved away and come back, but we have people who are moving in from West Roxbury, from Boston, and from Dedham, who are part of Brockton now. And I think we have to take the two parts of Brockton and to mesh into one part that makes Brockton what everybody continues to say, the city of champions. Some of us were champions of Rocky Marciano. Some of us were champions of Marvin Hagler. Now we need to be our own champions. We need to take a look at what city council is. City council is the bridge between the powers that be and the neighborhoods. And to do so, we need to be community. You need to have someone who represents you on your city council. And one of the things that I demand that we do, and maybe every city council should do, is a monthly ward meeting. And a monthly ward report card from those who live in your ward as to whether or not you are meeting up to the obligations that you say you can do. I don't have enough time to tell you everything about me and my background. There are some things on the table that you can take a look at. And one of the people who's working with us, Elma, Elma Downey, can you stand up and wave it loud, as loud as you can be? Elma Downey is the wife of the former NAACP president, Ed Downey. Elma is part of our team that we're trying to use to grow Brockton to be what we can be. There is a large amount of income funding coming into Brockton from the state and the feds to do a lot. And it cannot all be central in one area of Brockton. Because only X amount of people work in Brockton. Only 1,000 people live in downtown Brockton. Rest of us live outside of Brockton. And as I said, three and a half minutes, I don't have enough time to tell you all about what I want to do and what I need you to help me do for you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, George Brickhouse. Next up, we have Thomas Minichelli, who used to be with the school committee. 
And now, <laughs> Thomas. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank the NAACP for putting on this forum. My name is Tom Minicello. I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton. I'm an attorney in Brockton. I'm the current Ward 1 School Committee representative, and I'm running for Ward 1 Councillor in Brockton. I'd like to basically tell you why am I running for this position. Well, this position is all about people. It's about working with people. The first important person I'm going to tell you about is my grandmother. She came from Italy when she was four years old and spoke no English. She told me a very, and taught me a very important lesson. She'd say, Tommy, you're not better than anyone, and no one is better than you. You treat people how you want to be treated. And that was basically the, that was basically the code that I live by and I operate by. Common sense, treat people well, hopefully they will treat you well. Why do I want this position? My children went through the Brockton Public Schools. That's why I ran for school committee. They no longer are here in the Brockton Public Schools. They were successful. Now it's time to focus on this city. We are in such a unique place in the city of Brockton. The world is finally acknowledging the economic value of Brockton. They see the value of the location. They see the value of the community. They see the value of the people. We can go in one direction or the other. Now is the time in Brockton to take advantage of this economic realization that this is a great community, it's always been a great community, and we need to seize on this. We need to concentrate on economic development. Well, economic development in Brockton, we need good paying jobs. I have a proven track record with good paying jobs. I'm an employer in Brockton. I also, with my colleagues, work together, and we have now in-house going to bus students all around the city for the public schools. We're going to save the city millions, and we're going to get more coverage for busing, for apps to school programs, for uh, athletic sports. It's going to cost us less, and we're going to serve more. So I, can, I know about economic development. Education. We fought through some of the worst budgets in the city of Brockton. We now together with the state officials, with the city officials, the councilors, the mayors, the people in the school system, we work together, the people. We work together to bring $20 million more to this city so our students have computers, smart boards, air conditioning on a horrible day like today. That, 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 that means a lot. And we basically know how to survive in Brockton together. We also need to make sure that our citizens are treated fairly. On the Brockton, we now have in the Brockton school system a, a director of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Fine. This is perfect. We're going to move forward together. Together we're stronger, together we're better, and together Brockton will do it. Thank you all. Next up, we welcome Jamie Hodges to the stage. I first want to thank the NAACP for hosting such a momentous event. I want to thank BCA for recording this event today. I also want to thank all the citizens who took the time to come out and listen to all of the candidates and for this election. Finally, I want to wish all the candidates running in this upcoming election. Good luck to all of you. As you know, my name is Jamie Hodges and I'm running for Ward 2 City Councilor here in the City of Champions. Throughout my life, I am a product of the Brockton Public School System. I am a 2012 graduate of this very high school, Brockton High. <laughs> After high school, I attended Regis College where I received my bachelor's degree in management. That wasn't enough, I had to do more. I wanted to further my education and last year, even during the pandemic, I received my master's degree in business where I concentrated in HR management. My plans if elected for Ward 2 City Council are to improve our public safety. 
that's our public safety together as a whole. You want to be able to know that you're safe in your community. When you call the police, you want them to show up. That's my big concern. I also want to support our small businesses. My parents are owners of a small business. Small businesses make up our community. Also, I want to expand and deepen community engagement. I am running for city councilor of Ward 2 for my community. I'm ready to provide unity, innovation, and transformation among the Ward 2 community. I want to hear firsthand from my constituents their issues, concerns, and work together in unity with other councilors on improving our community one step at a time. By becoming Ward 2 city councilor, I will continue to respect, represent, sorry, your views and to be the voice on the city council. I want to be one of the decision makers who works alongside other councilors to address all city issues carefully and to make the best decision for Ward 2. By doing this, I can ensure it not only aligns with your values, but it supports the vision that you have for the future of your family, your business, and yourself. My professional career has provided me with the skills and insights that I, will be, that I believe will be useful on city council. I conduct myself with integrity and commitment, and I tend to be true to those in all the va I intend to be true to those values in all that I do for Ward 2. Remember, on September 14th, we have our preliminary election. Don't forget to go out and vote. Remember, vote me, Jamie Hodges, number three in the ballot. And remember, they always save the best for last. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Jamie. Next up, we have the masked man, Mark Diacostino. Mark? <laughs> I'm sure it's the baldness that threw you off. Because six years ago when I got on the school committee, I had a full head of hair. <laughs> Long gone. <laughs> so we'll thank you to the NAACP for having this event and having us all here. Thank you to all the candidates that took time to come tonight and be here, or this afternoon, sorry. Um, so I want to thank the school committee, the city council, and the mayor's office um, for all the leadership that they've shown through this pandemic. And I wanted to mention that. Uh, because it's been, it's been a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of difficult decisions, but those decisions we made, we made them as a team. And that's how you get things done in city government. You work as a team, not against each other, but you work as a team. And we've done that and I've been proud to lead that teamwork on the school committee for the last two years, almost two years. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that I've got, gotten done for Ward 3 because I feel like I've delivered for Ward 3 as your school committee member, and I'll be able to deliver for you as your city council, as your city councilor. So, in the time I've come on, we've brought free pre-K to Brockton Public Schools. I worked with my other school committee members to bring that forward and to accomplish that. But six years ago, seven years ago, there was no pre-K program in Brockton Public Schools. <clears throat> um, we were involved, as Mr. Minicello talked about, we worked as a team in the fight to get the Student Opportunity Act and get that $20 million into our schools that had been taken away from your children and my son, and it shouldn't have been. And we fought to get that money back here. Um, and then the Huntington School roof. For those of you who live down in that area, you may have noticed that there's a beautiful new roof going on the Huntington School. And it's way past due, but it's going to give us the ability to now go into that building and do some other work there. And I heard many reasons why we couldn't do that and finally we were able to get that done. I've served as the, as you know, the vice chairman of the school committee, which also made me the chair of finance and several other key subcommittees. So I can bring all of that experience to the city council and work on our quality of life issues. And those are the things when I'm hitting doors that you all have talked to me about. It's all been quality of life type of issues. So we'll work on that. <clears throat> um, the busing that we talked about is an example of fiscal responsibility, something you learn when you have budget, difficult budgets to face. You find a way to do more with less. And I certainly would say in the last six years, anyone who was on the school committee got a lot of experience in that way. Um, so we need to make sure that we support our police and fire. And I want to mention that because um, we need to make sure that our city is safe. And that's something that I hear a lot of people talking about is that they're concerned about safety. Um, so, uh, basically, you know, we work as a team to get things done for our city. I have a track record of delivering for the people of Ward 3, and as your city councilor, I'll continue to do that, and I'll finish with this. 
I hear a lot of people talk about what businesses need and what, you know, we need more businesses. I've run a business for 12 years. I bought that business during the Great Recession in 2008 and led it through that recession, and I've led that business through this downturn and through this pandemic. And I'll lead this city through this pandemic as well. We'll come out the other side, and we'll be stronger, and I'd be proud to serve as your city councilor. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Next up, we have Maria Tavares. First, uh, I would thank you, everyone, to be here, and good evening. And second, I'm just going to ask for silence for someone. It's so important for me because of him. I'm here today. He's not here with us, which is Bill Carpenter. Uh, my name is Maria Tavares. I uh, born and raised in Cape Verde. I arrived in the United States since 2008. Since I arrived in the United States, I accomplished so much until today. I am a business, I have, I'm married, I have four kids, and then I am business, I am a business leader. I reside in World D2 since 2013. I help in a lot of community and then I empower a lot of women to open their own business to become a business boss. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm a little nervous, it's my first time. And then I said, I just remember Bill because after him I'm here today. That making me so sad because, all right, <laughs> just give me a second, please. All right. Yes, the reason why I'm running for office, the reason I'm running for office because I am a businesswoman, I am a business leader. I graduated with a social degree in Fisher College. I got my bachelor's in Salem University. I work for city as a code enforcement officer, and then I, ha I help a lot of women open their own business to become their own business. I help a lot of citizens to become a U.S. citizen. I help a lot of people to apply to become disabled. On the pandemic, I went to Kevin Association. I helping a lot of people with the assistance in need. I joined a community. I helping a lot. I opened a business called America Dream. I graduate already 250 people out of 250. Only 50 got the job. Some of them, they couldn't because the English skill. I decided to open another organization called America Dream to partner with the pro literacy to provide English classes a second language. The reason why I'm running again, because like, I want to join the community to empower more women to become a leader like myself. Been in the United States since 2008, I am here today and I want to empower another woman to become a businesswoman, to become a leader, and then to be successful like myself. <laughs> this is the reason why I'm running, and then I wish you guys vote for me today, and thank you all. Thank you, Maria. Let's have a hand for our ward one through three counselors. Thank you guys, you may exit the stage. Thank you very much. Good luck, good luck, God bless you. At this time, I'm gonna ask wards four, six, and seven to come to the stage. Jeffrey Thompson emailed me, he's on a pre-planned vacation. So ward four, six, and seven, thank you. Madam President, yes. Gerson Montero is also in Cape Verde, just FYI. I'm sorry? Gerson Montero of the Southeastern School Committee running for council is in Cape Verde. Oh, okay. Just an FYI. And also, um, 
Tito actually emailed me and said he couldn't make it make as it, well. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, candidates. Cheryl Asak, you're up first. <laughs> First of all, thank you to the NAACP and Phyllis, congratulations on your amazing uh, award. Thank you. And uh, thank you to BCA for always being, um, being here in the city and bringing us into our, uh, to the residents' homes. And everybody here in the audience, thank you for being here. So good afternoon. I'm Shirley Azak. I'm your Ward 7 City Councilor, and I'm seeking re-election this November to continue to move our city forward. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a lifelong Brockton resident. My parents immigrated with my sister and myself from Lebanon in 1977. I was brought up in a working class family and I understand firsthand the immigration experience. I have made my life and my living in Brockton. I'm a proud product of Brockton Public Schools and also a proud graduate of this Brockton High School class of 1988. I have two amazing daughters who are also products of Brockton Public Schools who are um, attending college, they're college age, and we're actually in the process of moving them in today. So, but I felt this was very important, so I didn't want to miss it, so I needed to be here with you. Um, I, studied, I studied design, not in Brockton, but in Paris, France. I studied design and business. I'm fluent in three languages and I own a small business in this great city of ours, and I also serve as the a city councilor. The question today that I was asked to bring to you is, why should the people of Brockton re-elect me? Three and a half minutes, as other candidates have stated, is not enough time to tell everyone what I've done in the past um, eight years since I've been elected, so I will try to summarize it in a few minutes. From day one, I pledge to be open, transparent, and accessible. My phone is always on me, and I'm always there for my constituents. I've been a voice of reason and common sense, and do my best to represent all the residents, not a select few or a special interests, and I will continue to do that. Every resident deserves to be heard and represented, and I take pride in that I have been able to resolve many of their issues. I attend all of the city council meetings and subcommittee meetings, having served on all of them for a number of years, and even chaired some of them. For example, we have ordinance, accounts committee, real estate, public safety, information technology, and the traffic commission. And of course, I've chaired, um, well, I'm the only one on it from the city council, beautification, which we would like to expand in the coming, uh, coming years. I served as council president in the hardest year to date dealing with unprecedented events due to COVID-19. But with my experience, hard work, and leadership, we were able to continue our city council business throughout these hard times. I had counselors from out cities, other cities contact me and ask me how I have, um, how we're able to continue to do our meetings. So this, um, I support small business development, progress in our city, this is going to be a crucial election year as a city, as we have three of our veteran councils not seeking re-election. And that is why I kindly ask for your vote in bringing back experience, leadership, accountability, and dedication to Ward 7 and all of Brockton. I'm committed to you and dedicated to progress, so please vote Shirley Azak, Ward 7 City Councilor, this November election. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shirley. Next up we have John, is it Trostel? Trostel, okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Sorry for my height. <laughs> uh, my name is John Troxel. I am uh, president of the Bapus Drivers Union here in Brockton. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton. I'm 48 years old. I've uh, owned my home in Ward 6 um, for uh, going on 26 years uh, now. Um, uh, I've lived in Ward 6 my entire life and I love this city. Um, I chose to make Ward 6 my home and raise my family there. I have two kids that I'm proud of. My 
son's is going to be a licensed electrician, and my daughter's about to start uh, Stonehill um, this year. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> and again, I, I love this city. As a bus driver, I, I and interact with the public every day, and I get to see and hear uh, on a grassroots level, you know, the issues and the things I see on a daily basis driving the streets of Brockton uh, and being union president. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the, the Amalgamated Transit Union, which is the union I'm president of, um, you know, it, it's taught us, our, their slogan is, together we fight, together we win. And as a city, that's what we need to do. You know, there's only so much any of us uh, as counselors can do. We need the backing of the ward and the backing of the, the, the citizens. And that's one of the things I've learned as union president is it's all about basic respect. And I think we need to look at, you know, there's a lot of talk about um, <clears throat> we need to get more businesses in here and things like that. And I think part of the problem that nobody seems to be addressing, we have a big homeless issue in Brockton that we need to uh, get people help with. It's drugs, it's mental illness. That's a root issue that I really think, if we want to get any type of business in here, you know, this talk of the United Furniture Building uh, being uh, uh, redone and, and businesses going in there, and we have people living under the bridge right beside it. And it's heartbreaking seeing that every day. And it's something that we need to do to try to solve uh, and, and fix this issue. Um, you know, there's, there's other issues in the ward I see. Uh, you know, we need, the, the kids need a place to play in, in, in a sports area, like to play basketball, things like that. <laughs> there was talk of a sports complex going in in the ward, and it's a construction site dump. Nothing's being done to fix this issue. These are some of the issues that I think need to be done, that nothing's being done to solve these issues, and that's what I hope to do with your vote. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next up, we have Michael Smith. Of course, I got a little bit. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> it's okay about that. Good afternoon, Rockton. How are you doing today? I want to thank the NAACP for having me here today. My name is Mike Smith, and I'm running for Ward 4 City Council. I lived in Brockton my whole life. 34 years, I've been on every side of the city. I've been with my wife, Nina, for 16 years, married for 11 with two beautiful kids, Aubrey and Joey, with a baby on the way. Thank you. It'll be a December arrival, and it'll also be a tiebreaker. We're not finding out until then. Uh, my daughter was inducted into the TAG program at the Angelo Elementary School. Uh, I also volunteer coaching my son's baseball little league at the Downey. Over the years, I became an advocate for the city, from working with local businesses, helping them grow, to public safety. I've organized many cleanups with unappreciated volunteers, including the three-day Salisbury River one that took 100 trash bags out of that river. I have no problem getting my hands dirty to get the job done. Sometimes that's what you have to do. Not only have I done needle cleanups out here to help Brewster, but I have solutions to help the substance abuse and the hazards that are going on out here. We must break the stigma, but also we can't enable. We can't take the steps backwards. We need to take who's accountable, who's actually adding to this problem. What I'm bringing to the table is a non-biased, business-friendly attitude, which is something our businesses are not used to. I want to hear their concerns without being added to their growing list of problems. I want to give them a voice and the opportunity to speak. Being able to speak without hesitation. We need to bring new investors and new brands to fill the endless number of empty storefronts in this city. The first steps we need to take is cleaning up the city to make it more presentable. And that's going to take the efforts of all departments. We need to stop allowing our city to look like a dump zone. Next thing we need to do is take ownership and accountability. We need to admit when we're wrong. We are not business friendly, and we haven't been in years. We also need to hold our departments responsible for what they're not doing. I pledge to not defund our departments as well. I've done ride-alongs with our Brockton police officers. I've seen through their eyes what I've noticed 
with the, the big issues that are going on out here. But I also was notified that not one official has ever done a ride along. Am I surprised? No. Brockton needs to be represented better. We have officials who aren't seen in the community that can't relate to our issues because it steers away from their agenda. Officials walk, un walk around untouchable and at the same time out of touch. Ask yourself, what have we gotten for changes and are you happy? I'm in Ward 4 and I can't name a single thing. I'm Ward 4, vote for me and I'll stand in my, stand in my corner and I'll continue to fight for you. Next up, we have Bree Nichols. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bree Nichols. Many know me as Coach Bree. I'm currently running for Brockton City Council, Ward 7. I've shown up for my community and I'm asking for your support in continuing to do so. As the youngest candidate currently running, I believe myself to have the greatest potential to grow with the city. Many of our great leaders in the past were all under 30 when they made their mark on the world. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman, Albert Einstein, Amelia Earhart, Leonardo da Vinci, Frederick Douglass, and Eleanor Roosevelt, just to name a few, all pictured a better life for themselves and those around them. They paint, planted the seeds of change and created a garden of possibilities, and monumental growth happened because of it. The art of my plan is to paint a new picture for Brockton. That looks like increased civic engagement to hold city government accountable, reimagining a Ward 7 where businesses enter and thrive, and most importantly, equitable representation in city government. This is imperative in order to appropriately develop strategies with the community to improve relationships with and create transparency between public officials and the residents of Brockton. I will further the conversation and take action on issues such as the poor water quality in Ward 7, the weak building infrastructure, and abundance of derelict properties, issues concerning rent and housing stabilization, public safety, government accountability, and most importantly, community oversight of paid and elected officials. And to clarify, Accountability doesn't just mean pointing out wrongdoings. It means ensuring compliance with the law to be proactive and not reactive. Can we agree that Brockton needs change? I know it's easy to go with what we know, but that leaves little to no room for growth, especially when the status quo and those who are expected to be mentors speak with condescension and demean others instead of teaching and lifting us up. Change is hard and even uncomfortable at times, but that's why it's called growing pains. <laughs> we can learn from what the past has taught us and show up with youthful energy to grow and change. If elected, I will bring accountability, reimagination, and transparency to our city. It would be my honor and duty to advocate for both those who support me and those who don't. The seeds have been planted, and I will continue to water them until we see growth in our city. I have a vision to help Brockton flourish, but first, I wanna listen and learn about what our community has and needs. Let's stand up and fight as a community like the champions we are. Brockton, show up for guaranteed progress. I, I, I just want to remind folks, when you see my boss stand up, his time is really the time. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want me to get started. Next That's right. <laughs> okay. Next up, we're going to have Elizabeth Lasso. And, uh, Susan. I'm switching it around. Liz. <laughs> Thank you for not 
stealing all of my thunder. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank Phyllis and um, the Brockton chapter of the NAACP and all of those who helped put this event together today uh, and to the BAC for recording. My name is Elizabeth Lasso and I'm running for the Ward 6 City Council seat. Again, thank you all for being here today and I appreciate the opportunity to introduce myself to you all. For those of you who do not know me, um, I studied government and history at Suffolk University. I used to work in marketing and public relations for many years in Boston for over 15 years. I currently work right now for a global company called Marine Travel Lift and I provide customer relations management and provide service for over 450 boatyards and I keep five people employed and on the streets every day working even through this corona pandemic. I've been living in Brockton for 18 years because I chose to live in Brockton. I'm a transplant, I have lived all over. I was born in Braintree, lived in Boston for many years and then chose to come to Brockton because of the community and because of everything that Brockton had to offer at that point. Um, I'm the loving mother of two children. I've been a Girl Scout leader. I have been a uh, vice president of the parent organization for those schools, uh, which helped in fundraising to bring uh, enrichment programs and activities to the students that they normally wouldn't be able to get access to. I'm currently right now the vice president of the Northeast Neighborhood, Northeast Brockton Neighborhood Association, and I've spent the last year and a half learning about the problems facing Brockton and working with other candidates to try to find ways to solve them. Some of those problems include improving road infrastructure, working with the city to turn abandoned buildings into usable centers such as housing, community centers, and perhaps children's centers, the need to improve business growth and development in the city to help reduce homeowners' taxes or at least keep them at bay so that they don't keep going up year after year when there's an opportunity to actually have more businesses bring money and revenue to the city. I also want to make sure that our firefighters and police are properly funded and are well maintained. Uh, there needs to be, I think, more police presence in our neighborhoods and in our wards and districts. I think that there's a way to do that. Um, I like the idea of perhaps having uh, satellite stations in areas that we could have more local patrolling, especially uh, you know, during the times like 4th of July when so many people have problems with the fireworks. We have so many people having problems with the uh, illegal vehicles that, you know, the dirt bikes and such like that are on the roads. Um, so there's so much greatness in Ward 6. I look forward to the new businesses in the development, especially over in the village area. Um, there's going to be a new restaurant opening up 100 summers, uh, and it's one of the first new buildings that they're bringing back to life to bring new business back into that area which has been kind of defunct for a while. Um, so I've basically been watching and attending just about every city council meeting, planning board, zoning board, finance, traffic meeting over the past year so that I could learn more about how the city operates and to hear what people are looking to accomplish. I know what the commitment is to take on this role and I'm ready to get to work. I've been out talking to my neighbors around Ward 6 to hear what their issues are and what their hopes are for the future. What I've learned is that they are looking forward to past promises being made and becoming reality to the city. There are ways to improve Brockton, and the first step is to elect a representative who wants to do the work, not for political advancement, because it's the right thing to do. I promise to be that candidate for Ward 6 and all of the city of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Susan DeCastro. <laughs> Here. Thank you. My name is Susan DeCastro. Let me open by thanking the Brockton NAACP for this opportunity to address voters and residents and all of you here today and everyone who will watch this hereafter on Brockton Community Access. I also wish to congratulate President Phyllis Ellis for her rocking big award that she received from uh, the Myra Craft Foundation. Also, I wish to wish a happy birthday, it's a big birthday, it ends with a zero, to my husband, John, who's here with me today. Thank you. I've lived in Ward 4 of Brockton for more than 30 years. I live here today with John and with our two young adult sons. I was elected in 2017 to serve as Ward 4 City Councilor. Prior to that, I served for five years on the Brockton Planning Board and two years on the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals. I am here today asking for support of my reelection as Ward 4 City Councilor. I'm qualified to serve as the Ward 4 City Councilor by my education and life experience, by my work experience practicing law for more than 35 years. 
By my 20 years serving on the board of directors of the Charity Guild, which runs a food pantry and a thrift store here in Brockton. By my years on the planning board and the zoning board of appeals, and by my activism against a fossil fuel burning power plant that was proposed in Ward 4 and that is still not dead. Why reelect me as Ward 4 City Councilor? My goal continues to be to use my range of talents and experiences to affect positive change in Ward 4 and the city of Brockton so that the city provides a good quality of life to all residents and functions as a community of opportunity that our children, yours and mine, will be attracted to return to, to live in, and to raise their own children in. That's my goal. Serving as a ward counselor, it's not a, gra a glamorous job. And I really prefer being more of a workhorse than a show horse. My efforts as Ward 4 City Councilor make a difference in the lives of my constituents. And I work very hard. In the past three and a half years, I've received and responded to more than 500 calls or messages or emails from Ward 4 residents, Ward 4 businesses, and even some residents of other wards who heard that I would help them about all kinds of issues and concerns, including, to name a few, roads and streets, from signage to lighting to potholes to parking to paving, trash, and of course, speeding. Criminal activity, food insecurity, housing insecurity, homelessness, economic development, navigating City Hall. The best part of this public service is the people. And there are many great people in Ward 4 that I've had the pleasure to get to know. Uh, let's see. I show up and I listen, attending frequent meetings and events in the city. I hold public meetings, at Ward 4 general meetings and neighborhood meetings. I've arranged to pave streets, to, to, uh, to uh, put up new street lights. I've written ordinances on taxi cabs, auto repair licenses, and equity, diversity, and inclusion. Thank you. I've worked with our state delegation. We're getting a new playground. And I'm pleased to, to, uh, to serve the city in this way. But I'm not finished. I'm far from finished. And I'd be grateful for the votes of Ward 4 voters on November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Now we have Jack Lally. Yeah, that's, that's my name. Thank you. I uh, want to begin by thanking the, uh, the NAACP and Madam President Phyllis Ellis for, uh, for putting this on. Uh, the biggest thing I think that we can do is be out there and meet and greet people and, and get our names and our ideas as, uh, as wide as we can. My name's Jack Lally. I'm your Ward 6 City Councilor. I've been your City Councilor since I was 18 years old. I, uh, I shave a little more now. Well, my, uh, my priorities, things, things have changed. I, I was your counselor all through my time in college, through, through you know, in, into the, into the you know, professional world um, where I'm, I'm entering the insurance industry, so property and casualty insurance, a lot of, a lot of overlap between what I do now and that. Uh, and that. Not, not too old, as you can tell. Um, so really, despite all the things that have changed, I'm very proud that my priorities have remained the same. The biggest things in the ward have been and have, al uh, have always been and will always be infrastructure, public safety, and fiscal responsibility. Our roads are terrible. Our pipes are poor. The water pressure is bad. And we are more than ever aggressively replacing and repairing the underperforming parts of our infrastructure thanks to the efforts of this council and our mayor. We are moving faster, we are getting further, we are replacing pipes before they blow up, and uh, you know, getting rid of the ones that, that predate myself uh, by a little bit. And I always, I always joke that you know, if something happened before my time and somebody a little older than me will go, oh no, no, that, 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 you know, stop saying that. But we do have pipes under the city that are date stamped as young as 1856. So I think that predates quite a bit of us. This is what we need done. This is what we need replaced. The city has pushed aggressively 
to replace and repair these pipes, to repave these roads. I have pushed aggressively to increase our police presence in the city and in the ward, and we have seen quite an uptick. We're doing six times more roads than before I came in, three times more than the average counselor. We have worked very well with our school committee to give them the support they need during tough budget times when things needed to be repaired. We've been very supportive of, of the whole city as, as quickly and as aggressively as we can. I have sponsored and voted for hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cuts into budgets in my time on the council. And I will close as quickly as I can with, with three things, uh, two things really. See, I'm already shaving things off. Uh, I make three promises because you have a million people up here and what you've seen today is a lot of good ideas but it's a lot of talk. We've got a lot of results that we've done up in the area and I've, I've seen many politicians, they promise you a million things and you never see them again. I promise three things. If I miss your call, I will return it. Get an email, I'll return it. I'll hunt down what you need. I'm gonna work as hard as I can and if I cannot pull it out of my pocket and give it to you right now, I am not going to promise it to you because that is improper. It's a gimmick done to get votes. And that's not what we're about. I hope uh, if anyone has any questions, please reach out to me and I hope to have your support again as I run for re-election. Thank you. Let's, not, let's have another hand for everyone. Thank you guys, you may exit the stage. Next up, we're gonna have the councils at large come to the stage. Thank you, guys. I'm gonna mix this up. Someone actually came to me and said they have a proud commitment, so I'm going to start with um, Moses Rodriguez. You're up. That was quick. You said you had a proud commitment. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here. I want to thank the NAACP, uh, our president, but I also want to acknowledge uh, Bishop Branch for being here and uh, helping out as well. And BCA for being here and getting the images uh, to the folks at home. Um, and again, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Moses Rodriguez and I've been, uh, I've had the honor of being your city council for the last uh, seven and a half years. I'm, uh, I've been in Brockton for 40 plus years. I'm a product of this school. I graduated in 1990, 1980, <laughs> it's one of those years. And I have had three kids graduate from this school system and I have a grandson now who starts in the school system this fall um, as a proud Brocktonian. I heard from conversation in here about people being um, business owners I'm not a business owner, but I run a business in this community. I run the Cape Verdean Association here in this city. It's an association that provides jobs to the community, provides services to the community. We have eight employees in that organization that we, we finagle, we beg and plea with people to provide funding to our organization so we can provide those positions and then those positions in turn provide services to this community. Just to give you an idea, we started a, a vaccination program along with the Board of Health here in the city of Brockton going back to April. And to date, we have vaccinated. Now listen to this for a second. Not knocked on doors, not begged people to participate. We have vaccinated over a thousand people in this community. A thousand people in this community. So when others are actually saying that they're doing a lot of work in this community, and I've said this before, we can hear a lot of promises, a lot of, uh, a lot of jargon that goes back and forth, but it's work and, and services that actually uh, work in this community. We are currently providing 42 jobs to young people in this community. We've got 
late teenagers and some high school, uh, um, college students who are earning a summer job through the association to help them with some work with their families because that to me is very important as well. I've been a city council for seven and a half years. I've served as a mayor in this community as well. I don't promise a lot of things because you know what it is? That's not what we're all about. We're about putting work together. You, what you see here is what you get. And a lot of times what I say or, or, or gets told that I said, you know what, it is true. I am one of these individuals that don't promise a lot because to be honest with you, I'm short on promises and longer on looking for, to do the work. Every voice in this community should count and it's important, but not all voices, not all sound bites through social media are important voices. We need to keep that in mind. There's 100,000 people living in the city and we should not be verred by five, six, 10 people in this community dictating what happens in this city. So it's important for us to remember that there's 100,000 of us. 100,000 Brocktonians who are proud to live in this community, they will continue to live in this, in this city. I've had my phone number for 10 years and it's the same phone number. It's 508-386-5816. If you need to reach me, call me. If I don't answer, leave me a text and I'll make sure I'll get it to you because I don't hide away from anybody. I want your vote in, on September and in November again, should I be lucky enough to pass, because I love the city and I want to continue to represent the city. Thank you for having me and thank you for uh, all that you do in this community. Thank you, Moses Rodriguez. Next up is Jamal Brinkley. <laughs> He's like me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Jamal Brathwaite. Thank you to Phyllis Ellis and the NAACP, uh, Brockton Community Access, as well as everyone that was a part of the organization of today's event. Thank you for all those who are attending who want to get to know the candidates and want to know how can we improve Brockton because I want to as well. Today, I'm going to introduce who am I, why am I running, and what value can I bring to this role? I was born in Florida. I grew up in Washington, D.C as well as Maryland. I went to high school in West Virginia, and I graduated from UMass Boston with a degree in economics. I started my career working in investment management in Boston, and that led me to a career, a larger career, uh, in London, England, where I lived for 10 years. And every day when I went to sleep, I would dream about where would I live when I moved back to America. And the one place I wanted to live was Brockton, Massachusetts. Now, um, while working in financial services, I've worked many, uh, many hats, I've had many hats. I've worked as an accountant, I worked as a compliance officer, I've worked as an internal auditor, all for very successful institutions, all of which have uh, offices here in Massachusetts. Now, I'm also a lifelong learner, where I've earned uh, three master's degrees. I've got a master's in international economic law from the University of London. I got a master's in risk management from the University of East London. I've got a master's in accounting from the University of Massachusetts of Boston as of 2020. Overall, I am a lifelong learner. If I do not know something, I will take the time to read it, to understand it. The values that my parents instilled in me are the following. Integrity, have integrity at whatever you do. If you're gonna be great, be, you only can become great is if you actually gain input from everyone, all right? Um, secondly is the importance of um, integrity, objectivity. When you have an issue, it's important to understand the good, the bad, look at it from a 360 degree perspective so you can understand what is the most prudent approach moving forward, objectivity. And thirdly, the importance of information. I would never make a decision if I'm not an informed dis decision maker. And right now in our city council, I just think that too many of our city councilors rubber stamp and vote without having enough information or the audacity and courage and the bravery to speak up and ask for more information. <laughs> now, what does all this mean? It means I have the skill sets to set goals and the drive to achieve them. 
My, um, and as a Brockton City Councilor, my goal will be to work with colleagues on the council, the mayor, department heads, and the public to develop a city-wide plan to improve the infrastructure of our roads and our water pipes. These two activities go hand in hand. Right now in the city of Brockton, when we see roads being fixed, it's on a piecemeal basis. We need a grand plan for the entire city so we look at it from a priority point of view and so we can avoid the duplication of work and the wasteful spending of money. Hey, Jamal. <laughs> we will need to borrow at least $130 million um, as our top priority to get our roads up to par. Currently, the city of uh, Brockton, you know, we're going to invest $19 million to improve Ward 7. We need to improve every ward in Brockton. Jamal. Overall, <laughs> vote for me, City of Brockton. <laughs> Council at large, if you'd like to get to know me more, I'm hosting a town hall this Thursday, August 19th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the perfect place. It's located at 2039 Main Street. I hope to see you then. <laughs> Thank you, Jamal. <laughs> Next up, we have Rita Mendez. Hello, good afternoon. I am Rita Mendez. So as I stand here today before you inside this building, I can't help it but rewind the tape of my life on my teen years when I sat exactly where you're sitting in today while attending Brockton High School. At 16 years old, I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. So at 16, I was left without a legal guardian except on my own in this country. You see, I thought to be successful in life, you had to come from the right family. You had to have special talents. You had to be really smart. You had to have the right connections, know the right people, go to the right university. But I didn't have any of that. I spoke English with an accent. I was trying to basically survive in a country that at that time I was, I was still going through a very hard time. And I thought that was the end of it. But I had a guidance counselor in this school that believed in me. This school taught me that it's not gonna be talent, that it's not gonna be intelligence, that it's not gonna be your background, that it's not gonna be your family or connections. Now, as I come back to the present, fast forward my life to today, I'm probably able to say that I am a mother I'm a businesswoman, I'm a practicing attorney holding a Juris Doctor degree here in the city of Brockton, and I'm the first Brazilian ever elected as counselor at large in the city of Brockton. I am a living proof that hard work, resiliency, determination, never giving up is the key to achieve the American dream. Despite serving and as a city councilor in the most difficult times as we can possibly ever imagine, challenges that we face in the year of 2020 and 2021, as you can probably see with my story, challenges is not gonna stop me. And when we as a community coming together, we're facing challenges, that's when Brockton shows and proves that we are a city of champions. In the midst of the pandemic, we saw the community coming together and helping one another donating things and really showing up for their best. And that is what being in Brockton is all about. That is what the city of champions is all about. Hard work, determination. And uh, we accomplished a lot in the city council in the midst of pandemic while Shirley was trying to conduct the meetings over Zoom and making sure people wore masks and getting vaccinated. Now I am uh, hosting several COVID-19 pop-up clinics and the churches. And why I'm going to the churches? Because that is the hard to reach population. Unfortunately, Brockton is back in the red. We have more than 400 um, people that died in the city of Brockton. And this is only gonna stop, it's only gonna cut back in control once we hold ourselves accountable and make sure all of our own are vaccinated. So I am running for re-election. I'm Rita Mendez. I count on your vote September 14th and November 2nd. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rita. Next up, we have David Testera. Am 
My name is David Texera. I'm running for city council large. Like many of you on this room, we believe in Brockton. Over 40 years ago, I moved to, to the city and I graduated from Brockton High, class of 1986. Here, here I built four well-established business, provide hundreds of jobs to the city. I'm a proud father of five children, which two of my children, one is a state trooper and the other one is a firefighter, work for the city. Why I'm running for city council? The reason I'm running for city council is because I know where the city is today and we know where we can bring the city tomorrow. My main focus, public safety. We need a safe neighborhood where we can raise our family safe. School, we need to invest in our school, our teachers, and our kids because they are the future of our city. <laughs> business, we need to be more business friendly. Support our local business. Bring more business to our city. My experience, my passion, together we can build a better Brockton. Thank you. Wow. We didn't have to say time on him. I like that. <laughs> Next up we have Gary Keith. Gary. Good afternoon. I want to thank Phyllis Ellis for putting in the NAACP for um, have, putting on this forum for us. Bishop Branch, and BCA for being here today filming. I want to say hello to, and thank you to everyone that came out this afternoon to hear the candidates. First, I want to thank God for giving me the strength, the wisdom, and the opportunity to be here tonight to run. I want to thank my beautiful wife, Kathy, who's also my best friend, for supporting me in everything that I do. I want to thank my manager, Larry Curtis, and all those that helped my campaign. But we are all here tonight, this afternoon, because we believe. We believe that Brockton can be better and is, and is better than what people perceive. We all believe that Brockton needs new leadership. I have been out here assisting businesses and residents of Brockton immediately after the past elections that I ran in were over. You heard me out there, you seen me out there, and I didn't disappear after, for two years until another election run. In my humble opinion, serving Brockton, which is all of you, is an honor, and is an honor that I want. I have already served Brockton as a member of the Planning Board and Economic Development for four years, as well as the Zoning Board of Appeals for four years. I served our country as a United States Army veteran. I've been married, thank you. I've been married to my wife for 35 years, and we have seven children with six grandchildren and the seventh one due in, se in September. I have a background in law enforcement. I'm a former business owner. And as my logo says on my signs, experience matters. Now you will hear others speaking about how they will attract new business, but we haven't really heard how. First, attracting new businesses really isn't the role of any one counselor. It is a group effort by the council. And under the leadership of Mr. May, our city planner, with all being involved. So again, experience matters. But I feel that we need to focus on the businesses that are still here trying to make it work in Brockton. They need our help also. They need the help of the leadership in Brockton to assist them with growing their roots deeper so when the storms come, they're able to withstand it instead of moving out of the city of Brockton like most of them are right now. We need to stop losing our existing businesses to the surrounding towns that are more business friendly. We need to streamline the application process to those of those who want to come into Brockton to do business. And we need to patronize those businesses here in Brockton by all of us to help them grow deeper. We need to assist our homeowners with the upward spiraling homeowners taxes and the water rates. <laughs> Working with our public safety officials to assist them with the tools and the training they need to continue to effectively do their jobs as we don't have the problems that a lot of other cities have. 
And my stance on defunding the police is a resounding no. It will never happen if I'm elected. I have a plan to do this, and my strong point is to get it pushed through with the help of the other 10 counselors. These are just a few of the issues that I feel very important about. So to put it plainly, I am pro-business, pro-union, pro-public safety, and all Brockton at all times. I will also be working with our school systems to make them better and safer for our children, after school programs throughout the city for our youth, working diligently with the council on aging to make sure we continue to uh, make progress for the services for our senior citizens and our veterans. My name is Gary Keith Sr. My name is number four on the ballot. Experience does matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're going with Michael Nunez next. So taking the time into consideration, I like to keep it short as we have a lot of other officials, uh, candidates that are gonna speak after me. Um, but first and foremost, I would like to say that I am honored to be here and I would thank the NAACP for hosting this meet and greet. And that's the reason I am here today. Uh, so as a small business owner who is also a member of the National Small Business Association and with the Massachusetts real, real Estate License, I strongly consider myself a qualified candidate. I am running because it is time we stop talking about the problems and we become the solution. If I am elected, <laughs> if I am elected, I will work together with all other elected officials and with the city department with no biases. But first, we must do away with the narcissist and the consent condescend behavior as it creates division when we are pursuing unity. We must, <laughs> we must know the difference between being assertive and arrogant. We do not need no one who has the same for other. We are a city of champions, and that, my friend, is not a champion. I know as I have internalized it. Brockton, once a leading city that took part in the spark the industrial revolution, led by example, made statements for generations to see. I will prioritize our infrastructure, our public safety, schools, and businesses and arts through our downtown, downtown will come as our city visibility improves. And we will prevail. As we move forward, as we move forward, change will come as long as you vote for me because a vote for me is a vote for us. My name is Michael J.F. Nunes, a 30-year resident of Brockton, Massachusetts, and on September 14, 2021, I humbly ask you for one of your four votes for Council at Large, and then again on November 2nd. And I wanna thank you so much for being here. Out with the old, in with the Nunes. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna have Julio Palmar. the right height. <laughs> I want to first thank you to Phyllis Ellis and the NAACP for hosting this event. It's a great thing to have us out here. My name is Julio Pomar. I run for city council, the great city of Brockton. I grew up here. I graduated high school in 1984. I started my career as being a public servant in 1984. While my schoolmates were running down and getting their diplomas, I was in Chicago pushing up push-ups in Navy Hospital Corps School learning how to be a hospital corpsman. Since that time, I've continued on as a public safety professional, and I want to continue to do that. My son is in the, is in the Army right now, and I'm thinking of him as I stand here. I want to be his role model, and I want to be a role model for other children in this Brockton area. It's an exciting time for me I'm very excited to be participating in the government that we have. I hope some of you are as excited as I am. <laughs> I have two requests after I talk. I'm going to keep this really brief. I want to be a city councilor because I want to improve our infrastructure. I want to improve and strengthen and stand behind our public safety, which is also infrastructure. And I want to make a single place or one of many places where we can get together all our 
cultures and celebrate our diversities. Uh, the strength in Brockton becomes from the diversities that we have. Brockton has always been one of those areas where people congregate from all over the world. And as we look out into the population of Brockton, we have people from all over the world. And we should celebrate that. Not only be the city of champions, but the city of cultures and, and champions of cultures. As I finish my speech, because I wanted to make this brief, I'm going to ask for two things. I'm going to ask for your vote on September 14th. I'll be easy to find. I'll be on top of that list. I'm pulled out to be number one. Makes it easy. And as a public safety professional, and as a health care professional, I'm going to ask you and tell your families, get vaccinated. COVID's still out there. Protect yourselves. <laughs> protect your families. We've all known people who have died. Let's stop the sickness. Let's take care of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vote for me in September 14th. Thank you. Win Farwell. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you to all of you for taking time out of your schedule to come here and hear us tonight. I'm Wynne Farwell, Counselor at Large. I have been blessed and honored to serve in every elected position in this city. I served as mayor from 1992 to 1996. I served on the school committee for 10 years, and now I have served as a counselor at large since January of 2016. I have a bachelor's degree from Northeastern, and I have a master's degree in education from Boston University. I voted against raising water rates, as did Councilor Nicastro and Cardozo because we felt that we could not inflict more of a financial burden on our ratepayers. I wrote the ordinance which created, finally, job qualifications and requirements for the city solicitor, our chief legal officer. I wrote the ordinance that established minimum qualifications for the human resources director. I wrote the ordinance which requires all city jobs to be posted for a minimum period of time and not just on the city's website because we had a discrimination suit. A gentleman was denied an opportunity to work here. I'm sure you heard about the case. We paid over $4 million to settle that case, and that was blatantly wrong, and it cannot happen again. I also wrote an order. I also wrote an order which requires all of our vendor payments to be on the city website. You can go to the city website today, tomorrow, anytime, to the auditor and go to open checkbook and you can monitor where all of the vendor payments are going whether it's eleven dollars for simpson spring water in some office or whether it's electricity to national grid pay payments to national grid for electricity for the high school transparency absolutely i don't just talk about it i do it i view my role as a counselor at large as one of a working person identify the issues where we can improve the city identify issues where we can improve the quality of life for our residents and then act accordingly. So where do we go from here? One, we need first class schools. We need to continue to increase funding for our schools so that we prepare our children for a very competitive future. Two, we need safe and quiet neighborhoods. We don't need people going home and having fireworks and loud parties and disturbances. Your home should be where you can relax and enjoy your family. Three, we need Traffic enforcement, community policing, and neighborhood crime watch in all sections of the city. We don't have that, and if we establish a bona fide, concentrated community policing program in every ward, we will build relationships with the police. It doesn't matter how many police officers you have. It depends upon the relationship between the police and the residents. Four, Four, we need genuine economic development, true economic development, not just housing, housing, housing. We need to attract businesses to Brockton, emerging technologies, <laughs> new businesses that are spawned by the pandemic, assemble some parcels of land that the city may own and sell them to a business that wants to locate here. But people deserve to work. People deserve an opportunity to augment their income and support their family. And then finally, infrastructure. We need a clean city with improved infrastructure 
in every ward we should have a program where we have street sweeping, we have crews out, we clean up neighborhoods, we have a bona fide, uniform, consistent code enforcement program holding businesses responsible for the regulations that we have in place. So again, I view my position as a working one. I will continue to do that if you give, the, uh, give me the honor of serving for another two years. I'll evaluate the issues where I think we as a council can step in. And by the way, all of what I've mentioned, I didn't do by myself. What I did was bring it before the council, and then I guess the old boy network or the old guy that we hear so much about, we all came together and we voted these things because we knew they were important for the city. So I will continue to do that. I ask for your support, and I cannot thank you enough for the opportunity of serving you as a member of the city council. Thank you. Let's have a hand for all the council at large candidates. Thank you. You may exit the stage. Really appreciate it. Good luck. Okay. We're going to have the candidates for mayor come up. They can sit wherever. There's so much space up here. on time, so that's great. Okay. Okay. Candidates for mayor. We're going to have Eugenie Kavanaugh come. Hello, everyone. Hello, Brockton. Thank you, Phyllis and the NAACP and Tony Branch for allowing us to be here today and hosting this event. My name is Eugenie Kavanaugh. I am a mother of two teenage boys, one inside the Brockton Public High here, and the other one over at New Heights Charter School. I am the founder and CEO of Mother's Pride, an organization supporting and navigating parents with children who identify within the LGBT community. I have served my country for 13 years with one combat tour as a soldier in the United States Army. I have a bachelor's degree in social work from Bridgewater State University and associate's degree in human service from Massasoit Community College. As a former member of Brockton Interfaith Community Organization, I have invested in volunteering my time, my talent, and my treasure working tirelessly in the efforts as a community leader, organizer, and as a treasurer. In addition, leading the efforts with many other organizations, holding actions and demanding education funding and reform for Brockton Public Schools, resulting in the Student Opportunity Act. In 2019, I was the lead organizer for BIC in the Brockton's local election in supporting civic education, engagement, as well as voter registration and the 2020 census. In addition to partnering with City Life, Viva Urbana, organizing and advocating around housing eviction during our national crisis. While spending countless hours in our community, echoes of nepotism, corruption, as well as how our city is being monopolized on our backs through our tax dollars, leaving many residents and all the witness our de desperation, poverty, homelessness, joblessness, and a high crime rate. This is what other cities and towns are naming our city as a city of champions. Brockton, these echoes has resonated within our city walls and are not just from black and brown communities. These are the voices from within our every race and every class. These echoes are talking and a toll on our community. Again, these issues are taking a toll on our community as well as our everyday way of life. My fellow residents of Brockton, hear me when I say I have zero tolerance, zero. For those of power and influence of favoring relatives or friends and giving them jobs. Zero tolerance for those targeting citizens with wrongful arrest and kidnapping acquitted individuals into the prison system. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. Excluding positions and controlling over Brockton's infrastructure to the point we are not building generational sustainability. 
and zero tolerance around lack of transparency, manipulation, coercion, and humiliating residents, candidates, as well as other public officials. As we see the, tre the trending residents being treated less than pu by public officials and other for political gain and power, this is what we are seeing here in Brockton. So therefore, as a mother, a veteran, an educated woman with experience in the community, I'm asking you to stand with me for mayor of Brockton. A woman who is unafraid to take action in building a generational, sustainable city for all. In addressing community diversity needs around addiction, homelessness, gang violence, as well as lack of job opportunities, affordable housing, diversifying our language in our, in our healthcare system and other important places, that spending as, and places to spend our hard on money. Because we have money that we want to spend. We need a place to spend it at. We need to live in a city with more vibrant in our city. Just vibrant with ethnicity, with showing our cultural race, as well as our cultural language. Our city needs to industrialize and thrive economically with meaningful wages and opportunity for jobs for all. In addition, with residents owning their small business, rather than folks in Boston dominating our historical city. Parents of Brockton, we can have our youth compete economically with their future of returning back to Brockton with employment opportunities. Brockton, City Hall belongs to you. We, where you and your values are represented and respected. Brockton, let's take action. Vote for me, Eugenie Kavna, a woman of action. Thank you. Next up, we're going to have Tina Cardoza. And I'm excited to be here. I love you all. I told you two years ago when I won the election for city council at large that I loved you and I was going to fight for you, and that's what I've been doing. Thank you, President Ellis, and thank you, Bishop. Thank you so much, NAACP, for hosting this, for putting this together. We need forums like this to bring together the residents of our city, to keep them informed, to keep them engaged in the political process and the power that impacts their daily life. Many of you know me. You've watched me on the city council meetings. As Councilor Farwell pointed out, you want to see the opposition? Check her out on, on BCA. So you know who I am. I am a forceful voice for you. Often others are shouting me down, but I refuse to go silent. I demand transparency for you. I demand accountability for you. I speak directly to issues that impact people that look like the majority in this city. Why? Because you have been unheard, not respected, you've been insulted, and you've been maligned. My friends, we are divided and we are misinformed. City government and special interest groups pull the wool over our eyes. If you dare to speak truth to power, the machinery of misinformation begins. They begin with dog whistle. She's an angry woman. She does not know what she's talking about. She lacks experience of how things work. She's a troublemaker. Well, if I'm a troublemaker, I wear that badge proudly. I stay in trouble. If I'm angry, it's because you've been cast out of city government with no voice to champion the needs of your family, unless they decide to let you in. As your next mayor, the people's mayor, all are welcomed, all are heard, all will receive justice, all will have equal access because you are all champions. To the special interest groups, you will have no key to City Hall because the troublemaker won't let you in. It's time, it's time for us to stop and think. You've been voting the same people into office for many years. Same families, same people. The same families all tied into these special interest groups. Are you better now, off now than five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Neither am I. Have they done anything for you besides raise your taxes and your water bill? No. I voted against raising your taxes. I voted against raising your, your, your water bill. So listen to the troublemaker. I'm a, from a family of police officers. My brother's a police officer. A lot of my friends, cousins are police officers. I'm not anti-police. 
Don't let them paint that picture of me. I worked alongside many police officers and firefighters as an RN for 25 years. I was on the front lines. They are the heroes. And yes, a public safety complex is necessary, okay? Uh, it uh, but public safety includes more than that. Sorry, I lost my place. It includes a new high school, more playable parks for our youth, prioritizing youth activities, after school programs, and jobs so our kids stay out of trouble. Public safety means investing in a Department of Health and Human Services where we have layers <laughs> underneath this department to tackle domestic violence, youth services, elder services, veteran services, all the services needed for a major city like Brockton. Our latest census shows that our population has grown. It shows that we are predominantly a black city as well. These the disparities and many of the inequities that exist in this city need to be prioritized in order for us to be safe. So please don't listen to misinformation. This, is, this administration found the time and resources for a new public safety complex at the tune of $198 million, but cannot prioritize these areas that I just outlined. Well, under my administration, these areas will be prioritized. <laughs> Leadership is choosing to put people first. The troublemaker wants the best experience for your children and your family. What do you want? I respect the voters. The last time you believed you were electing an at-large council who had 14 plus years on the council and a municipal background on his resume, some of you thought it was a good fit. Who knew that we would go into this mismanagement of COVID funds, um, in, sorry, who knew that we would go to the mismanagement of COVID because of 16 years he never took the time to get to know the community? Who knew that we would create a work environment at City Hall where we've lost 10 major positions? No HR, no assistant HR, no auditor, no uh, director of social services, even his chief of staff quit because of his mismanagement and his inability to work with others. I have a lot more to say. The mayor has increased our budget by 11% during a pandemic. He's collected $100,000, half of that money from special interest groups and outside CEOs. He's going to put them first. He's going to put his pension first because that's all he cares about. Who's going to put you first? Vote Tina Cardoza, September 14th, November 2nd. I got you. I love you, Brockton. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Now we have incumbent Mayor Robert Sullivan. First of all, good afternoon, everybody. It's an honor and privilege to be here today. I want to thank you all for coming here. I want to thank the NAACP and President Ellis and, and Bishop, who is also an elected official at Southeastern Regional. Let's not forget, 65% of the kids are from Brockton that go over there. Thank you very much, Bishop. So I'm Bob Sullivan, and uh, I stand on my record. I'm a Brockton guy. Someone said to me the other day, why the hell would you run for mayor again? Why? Why? It's got to be the worst job. Look how many mayors in Massachusetts are giving it up, calling it a day. I said, I'm a Brocktonian. We don't quit in Brockton, right? We need to make sure that we continue to have a healthy, safe community. I have people that I've known since junior high that don't talk to me anymore because I had to take action, executive orders, curfews, and closing gyms, right? Stuff to try to save lives in the city of Brockton because of a pandemic. A pandemic. It's not over yet. We've lost over 400 people. But the first thing I did when I came into office, standing on the stage, was to do a community engagement meeting. And it was packed, and it was awesome. And I said that day, we need to get the census right. We need to ramp up the census, or we're going to lose money. Guess what? We ramped it up. We're not losing any money. We're on the books now, almost 106,000 residents here in Brockton. Federal money's coming in. Federal money will be coming in. But it's about collaboration. It's about working with Councilor Cardoza and the city councils to get a budget passed. It's working to get a 98, not 198, a 98 million to a new building for police and fire and IT so that they can leave this building and give classroom space for the boys and girls that need it. When you're the mayor, you chair the bat bus. I didn't know that, but you do. You know what I said as chairman? I want to have free fairs on Saturday and Sunday in the summer for Brockton residents. So we'll help our businesses. And that's what happened. We don't charge right now on Saturday and Sunday. 
Another thing as mayor, you chair the school committee. Mike Thomas and I are proud graduates of Brockton High. I'm 1988, he's 87. We work together every single day with the seven elected school committee members. Those shiny buses out there that you see is because of collaboration. It's gonna save $4 million for Brockton to help the boys and girls. Those are just facts. Now, COVID has changed everything, physically, mentally, emotionally. It's just changed the world, but it didn't stop. As mayor, other mayors, every Sunday night we do a Zoom, and they would say, we're closing construction in Boston, in Revere, and Chelsea. What are you doing in Brockton, Sullivan? We're not stopping in Brockton. You know what? It's paying off. Go downtown right now. Go downtown right now. 700 units in the queue right now. But it's about collaborating. It's, it's calling people. Calling Stephen Lynch when you need PPE. Calling Stephen Lynch when you need the American Rescue. We got 17 million bucks this year, another 17 million next year. We're talking about infrastructure. It's coming up creative. Historically right now, borrow money from municipalities. It's almost like they're giving away free money, right? Because the interest rates are so low, but you gotta capitalize on it. But you also have to work and think about how do we, number one, have a safe, economic, thriving community. First thing is about safety. It's about creating, in my office, the Health Equity Task Force and the Wellness Trust Team. It's about working with nonprofits, the charity guild, so we could deliver food to people. It's working with the Cape Verdean Association. As Moses said, every Thursday, we have a clinic there. Every Thursday. We just had one today at the Shaw Center. Every Saturday, led by the Board of Health, 27 people got to shot. 27 lives are going to be saved. It's working with Neighborhood Health Center. Every Thursday, they're there. It's about working together working together. Now, can Brockton be better? Yes. Will Brockton be together? Yes. Together, we're better. But I'll tell you this, I'm running for mayor because we deserve to continue to move the track, the, the train down the track. Make sure that everybody in Brockton, I don't care where you are, everybody in every ward, every precinct is expecting professionalism and courtesy, and that's why I called in and had an audit done for all the different departments at City Hall, saying, hey, I do have an MBA degree, I worked hard for it, let's get to work. I do have a law degree, I worked hard for it, let's make sure we have the best city solicitor in Megan Bridges. And I wanna take a moment, Sydney Merrill, she is my new chief of staff, she's here today, and she's an awesome person. So all I can say is this, I, I, I appreciate Ms. Kavanaugh for being here and her service to our nation. I respect and appreciate Councilor Cardoza for serving on the City Council. But on September 14th, I'm third on the ballot. But I'm always first for Brockton. And you know, I do know the community because I was born and raised here and I married a wife born and raised here. And I will tell you this, I've said this before, I will never let you down. You can disagree with me, but I will always work for you. Thank you. God bless you all. Please get vaccinated and stay safe. Thank you. Let's give a hand for all the candidates. Let's give them a hand. Thank you all for coming out. We appreciate all the candidates for coming. Please vote on September 14th. But after that election, we will be scheduling debates, lively debates. So if you have not registered, please register. And please vote on September 14th. Thank you all for coming again. Thank you for my wonderful staff, Bishop Branch. <laughs> Everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed the food. Thank you. Mad Madam President, yes. Madam President, yes. if I may, before you folks leave, if you have not heard, in Haiti they had a devastating earthquake. Yes. A large amount of the Brockton community are of Haitian descent. We have a lot of residents, uh, but they are Americans. Uh, more importantly. Uh, so I ask that not only that we take a moment of silence, but that I uh, just give a, a prayer. Do you mind if I do that? No. Let, let, let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you reach into the land of Haiti. We ask that your ever-present hand touch each and every person, redeem them in their health, heal them in their injuries. Lord, we ask that you move throughout the families that may be mourning. Lord, we realize that you're still on the throne and everything is possible. Lord, although they may have an earthquake, we ask that you shake in their spirit, understanding that your righteousness will prevail. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you all.